All right, now we're here at number 30. So um, it says find a polynomial of least possible degree having the graph shown. So we know it's going to be a times x plus 4. And since it goes through, it's going to have an exponent of 1. Here you have two different x-intercepts. So you have x minus 5, and it goes through there, so 1. And x minus 6, and then it goes through there as well, so 1. Okay? And so then, and that should be my f of x. Now I'm going to use this point to find out what that coefficient should be. So the y value is 60 and the x value is 0. So I get 60 equals a times 4, negative 5, negative 6, 60, and a times positive 120. So if I divide both sides by 120, I get that 1 half equals a. So the function is going to be 1 half x plus 4, x minus 5, and x minus 6. When the exponents are all 1, you don't have to write the ones there. This is the answer. Now, similarly for this one, so we know f of x is going to equal a, and then this is a negative 5, so we get x plus 5 here. This is positive 3, so we get x minus 3. This one crosses through, which means the exponent is 1. This one bounces, though, which means the exponent is 2. And in order for me to find the a, I have to use this extra point here. So the y value is 9, and the x value is 0. Oops, 0. So I get 5 times negative 3 squared, 5 times positive 9, so I get 45. If I divide both sides by 45, I get that 1 over 5 equals a. So then my function is going to be 1 over 5 times x plus 5, x minus 3 squared. Again, when the exponent is 1, you don't have to write it. But if it's 2 or 3, you have to write that in there. And this is the final answer. And so you do have to show some work for that particular problem, especially this part you might not have to show work, but you definitely have to show how you're coming up with this number in the front by doing the work to calculate that in value. Now, number 32 says give the equations of any verb horizontal or oblique asymptotes for the graph of the rational function. So notice that this doesn't have any x's, so you can think of that as x to the 0. So the degree of the numerator is 0, and the degree of the denominator is actually going to be an exponent of 1. So what you have is the numerator, degree of the numerator is less than the degree of the denominator. In that case, it was automatically at y equals 0, the horizontal asymptote anyway. Okay, so over here, um, well, we'll wait. Right now we know we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. For the vertical asymptote, you had to set the denominator equal to zero. So x minus three equals to zero, and if I add three to both sides, I get x equals to three. And so that is your vertical asymptote. So there is one vertical asymptote, there are two vertical asymptotes, or no vertical asymptotes. It's going to be a, and what is the equation? It's x equals 3. Make sure you use the correct variable here. Um, the horizontal or oblique, I don't have an oblique, um, but I do have a horizontal asymptote, and it's going to be y equals 0. Again, horizontal should be y. The variable should be y. 32 is very similar, but it's got a different function here. So the degree of the numerator the highest exponent is 1. The degree of the denominator, that highest exponent is also 1. So they're the same. When they're the same, the horizontal asymptote is at y equals the leading coefficient of the top over the leading coefficient of the bottom. Since this is the term with the x in it, the x to the 1 power, I'm going to use his coefficient, which is negative 5. And then this guy had the exponent of 1, so I'm going to use his coefficient, which is 2. And I can't really simplify that. It's just going to stay negative 5 halves. 
Now the vertical asymptote you actually get by taking the denominator equal to zero. So we have two x plus six equal to zero. If I minus six on both sides, I'm gonna get two x equal to negative six. And then if I divide by two on both sides, I get x equal to negative three. So I only have one, vertex, one vertical asymptote and it's x equals negative three. Notice here, they already have the x equals and they're not asking me for the equation. So pay special attention to the directions. If you try to type in there x equals negative three, it's gonna keep counting you wrong even though you have the right value. Only because it already shows the x equals part of the equation. Now here it says choose the correct choice below. So the horizontal equation is y equals negative five halves. So I've got that one. And then it says select the correct choice below, fill in the answer. It has, you don't have both. You can never have both a horizontal and oblique. It's one or the other. So the fact that I have a horizontal means I'm not going to have an oblique because both of them have to do with the degrees. And so you only have one of the two cases. Now, number three says graph the function. So remember, your denominator tells you the asymptotes, the vertical asymptotes. So you have a vertical asymptote at x equals negative two, if I minus two on both sides, right? Your numerator is going to tell you your x-intercepts. So if I minus seven on both sides, I get x equals negative seven, and that's an x-intercept, okay? Then um, your horizontal asymptote, that, that depends on the degree. So the degree of the numerator is one, the degree of the denominator is one, exponent here, exponent there. So then that means the horizontal asymptote is at y equals coefficient over coefficient, one over one, which is just one. So I'm gonna draw it, but I should have an asymptote at one, so I should have an asymptote there. And then I should have a vertical asymptote at negative two. I should have an x-intercept of negative seven. And then um, I don't really have a y-intercept. So if I wanna figure out the y-intercept, all I gotta do is plug in zero for x. I get seven over two, which is 3.5. So one, two, three, four. It's about right there. So since I can't cross this horizontal asymptote and I can't cross the vertical asymptote, this is going to look like this. And same thing here, I can't cross over there and I can't cross this, so it can't go downward. Um, and then this will have to trail off toward the y-axis. So which one of those does it look like? Um, this one looks like it has the correct vertical asymptote, but notice that the horizontal asymptote looks like it's at zero, so it's not that one. Here it looks like the vertical asymptote is at positive two, and that's not the case. Here it looks like the asymptote is at positive two, and that's not the case. So most likely in this case, it was option D, which would have the vertical asymptote at negative two, and the horizontal asymptote at positive one. So even though this one had the correct horizontal asymptote, the vertical asymptote was wrong, okay? So you've gotta match the correct asymptotes to these graphs. And you have to show how you know that those are the correct asymptotes in your work. So here's another one. Um, we're going to do vertical asymptote first. So vertical asymptote, we're gonna take squared minus two X minus 24 equal to zero. I can factor this one pretty quickly, so I will. If you're doing a quadratic formula, you'll still get the same two answers. So I'm gonna have negative six and positive four. I get x equals to positive six and x equals to negative four. Those are my vertical asymptotes. So notice this is 12, so that's negative six. That one's got one at negative six. Mine's supposed to be at positive six, so it's not this one. Um, here you've got one, two, one, two, three, four. Oh, here you have one and negative six again. Or I'm not even sure what, let's just do it by ourselves because 
the units on here are messed up and I can't zoom in like you can on your computer to see what those units are. Um, but it looks like these two are okay as far as asymptotes are concerned. This one, no, because negative four should be closer to the um, y-axis than positive six. And so notice that this asymptote is closer on the positive side than it is on the negative side. Over here, the negative value is closer than the positive value. Same thing here, the negative value is closer to zero than the positive value. So A and C may still be in the running. Um, then you have to figure out what the um, what the horizontal asymptote is. So the degree of the numerator is equal to two and the degree of the denominator is equal to two and they're the same. So the asymptote is that y equals this coefficient over this coefficient, which is y equal to three. Now notice the horizontal asymptote for this one is um, zero. So it's not that one and it's not that one. Here, one, two, three, this is five. So that looks like it's about at three, right? So that one looks good so far. Um, and then if you were to find the y-intercept, um, let's see what we get for the y-intercept. We would get three times zero squared plus three times zero minus six over zero squared minus two times zero minus 24. And so you'd end up with one fourth. And that does look like it's going over. You can't tell, and I don't have a zoom function on my paper, right? But it does look like it's going over the x axis just a tiny, tiny bit, which, which would represent this y intercept of positive one fourth. So the option here is C, which is correct. Um, if you had a D, an option D, that looked the exact same. So let's say this one was over here and was over there, but it had something like this in the middle, right? Then in that case, you would have to, um, in this case, you would have to like plug in a value to make sure, or you would have to find the x-intercepts in order to figure out. So you would actually have to take the x-intercepts, take this thing and then set it equal to zero um, and to find the x-intercept. So I'm going to divide everybody by three and I get x, x squared plus x minus two equal to zero. And so I have x plus two, x minus one if I factor it. Or if you use the quadratic formula, you'll still get the same two values. So I should have x-intercepts of negative 2 over here and a positive 1 over here. And notice that if I had an image that were going upward, I wouldn't be getting both of those x-intercepts. So it would have to be this guy here, which does cross the x-axis about right there and does cross it again about right there. Okay. So finding all those bits of information, the intercepts and the asymptotes, is going to help you to determine the uh, equation of the graph or the graph itself. Now here we're going to go backwards. Okay, so now we're trying to determine the function. So we know that the um, you basically are going to have a and then the the uh, x intercepts. So we're going to have x minus well that's a negative four. So we're going to have x plus four and then x minus zero. It goes through and through so the exponents are one and one. Then the denominator, I do have a vertical asymptote there at negative two. So this would actually be positive two. And I do notice that the horizontal asymptote is lifted up at two, which means these should have the same degree. So if there's two of them there, that means there's got to be two of them here. And not only that, is if it's lifted up at three, that means this coefficient needs to be a three. And so what is the equation going to look like? You don't ever write x minus zero, you just write x. And they usually put the x, the single x in the front over x plus two squared. And so for 37, we're gonna do something very similar. So we know that um, you have a, and then the x-intercept is actually here and here, which is negative two, so x plus two. 
and at zero, which is x minus zero. And then you've got a vertical asymptote there at, that's negative six, this is negative five, so x plus five. Notice again that the horizontal asymptote is at one. So that means this degree has to match this degree. Um, so this needs to be two. And since that value there is a positive one, then that mean the, means the a value would have to be a positive one. Now we don't ever write the positive one coefficient and we don't ever write x minus zero, we just write x. And then you've got the x plus two next to it and the x plus five squared at the bottom. So that would actually fit this option here. Okay, I am a little bit over 15 minutes, but I am on the last problem, so I'm not gonna do a whole nother video just for the last problem. So here, I don't have an x-intercept over here. I do have one here at five, and then that's the only thing I see. So I'm gonna have a and x minus five, and at the bottom, I have two vertical asymptotes. I have x minus zero, and I have x minus eight. Now here I have one and here I have two, but notice that the horizontal asymptote is at zero. When it's at zero, it means that the top exponent should be smaller than the bottom exponent. And I have that, I have one bubble at the top and I have two of them at the bottom. So I already fit that description. So it really doesn't matter what this a value is, it could be anything. And it looks like since none of them have a number there that they chose to just use this as a one, okay? So if I clean this up, it's just x minus five on the top all by itself. And then at the bottom, it's x by itself times x minus eight. And does that fit any of these? It does, it fits b, okay? So remember, if the horizontal asymptote is at y equals zero, then that means that the degree of the numerator should be smaller than the degree of the denominator, okay? That'll help you out with that particular problem. So that's it, we finally finished the test review. I know it was kind of exhausting, especially for me having to go through the whole thing and explain everything all out in one sitting. Um, but for you, I highly recommend that if you hadn't already, because I'm already at the end, so hopefully you listened at the beginning and you just took each video, attempted those problems, and then the next video and attempted those problems and so on and so forth. If you didn't do that and you just watched the whole thing through and you're confused as all hell, <laughs> then what you want to do is you want to go back, watch part one again, and just do those problems on the review, save your review, then watch part two, attempt those problems, and then save that part of your review, then go watch video three, so on and so forth, until you finally get here and you can finish these last few problems, okay? Um, so hopefully that helps and hopefully it helps you prepare for this test. Now notice that in a lot of the problems, there were multiple versions of the same type of problem. That's not gonna happen a whole lot on the test. It might happen for a couple of problems, but for the most part, they're all gonna be a little bit different from one another. So just keep that in mind that even though we gave you two to three versions of like every problem, um, you're probably only gonna see one, maybe two, okay? So, Good luck and we will see you in the next video.